Well, hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to give you a full walkthrough for the app for the S7 Max V from Roborock. This is using the Roborock app. Now, if you have the original S7, there are a lot of similarities here. You can watch this video. Last year I did do a walkthrough for the S7. I'll leave a link to that right above. Now, if you're new to the S7 Max V or you're thinking about purchasing it, this video is for you as I'm going to show you how to use the S7 Max V and how you can get the most out of it and use all of the features and functionality and decide which features and functionality you do not want to use. So you won't want to miss this video. We're going to go ahead and get started by uh, clicking on the menu button, which is in the top right of the app here. And we're going to walk through the menu system to show you all of the features. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and take the S7 Max V out of the box, get your house mapped and set up, and then come back to this video. Follow the instructions for this is not a video on how to map your house or how to set up your S7 Max V. It is only an app walkthrough video. So the first option here we have is the reactive AI obstacle avoidance, which is unique to the S7 Max V. The obstacle avoidance can be turned on or turned off, so you can disable it from right here. If you turn it on, you do have a few extra options. I will tell you which ones I recommend leaving on and which ones you can leave off. The AI environment recognition will essentially allow the S7 Max V to detect different floor types and furniture. We'll get more into that here in a few minutes. I recommend leaving that on. The less collision mode, uh, leave it up to you as to whether or not you want to leave it on or off. If you find it is essentially bumping into too many things, you can turn on the less collision mode, which will make it a little bit more sensitive. I find this option doesn't really make a huge difference. I do leave it on and recommend you leaving it on as well. So obstacle photos will sh here will show you a photo of any obstacles that it detects or wants to avoid in your home. I recommend leaving that on. If you have pets in your house, make sure you choose yes. It will essentially move away from stuff like pet waste and to be a little bit more sensitive for detecting it. The fill light is something new with the S7 Max V. I recommend leaving that on automatic. The other option is just plain off. If the S7 Max V is in a dark environment, it can turn a little LED light on on the front so it can see objects better. The remote viewing option is turned off by default. And you can follow the instructions here on how to turn it on. That is the two-way video conferencing option on the S7 Max V. The next option is the manage map option. Uh, by default, map saving is now turned on, thank goodness. Uh, and you can select whether you have a multi-level or single-level home. If you have a multi-level home, you will have the to choose between smart recognition or manual selection. Smart recognition basically means that when the robot vacuum starts out on a cleaning, it will detect or try to detect which level of your home it is on and then use that map. Manual selection means that you will choose the map in the app for the S7 Max V before you start out on a cleaning. I do have a single level home, uh, so I leave it on single level. I just wanted to show you the features for multi-level. Here you can also see that you can edit the map quickly from here. We're gonna go a little bit more in depth a little bit later in a different place to show you how to edit the map. The next option is the robot settings. The uh, option at the very top is to turn on or off the lights on the buttons on top of the S7 Max V. Those buttons are the home, the spot cleaning, and also the power button. The status indicator light is on the front of the S7 Max V, right in front of the buttons. I will tell you essentially by the light what it is doing. Green is for charging, white is for vacuuming, and blue is for mopping. You can turn that light on and off from here. The child lock is a nice, neat feature. Here you can turn that on and off from here or on top of the robot vacuum. And essentially what it will do is it will lock out the buttons on top of the robot vacuum so accidental presses don't. Uh, cancel a cleaning job or send the robot vacuum out for a whole house cleaning. Do not disturb mode is a handy feature that will make the robot vacuum uh, so that it won't do certain sounds during this time period. I use it mostly so that it won't empty the dock. The dock won't empty the robot during this time period as that is quite loud. Off-peak charging is something that is new uh, the Roborock has released. I don't quite understand it. 
Uh, essentially, you can choose when you want the robot vacuum to charge and when you don't want it to charge. That is the option that I am going to leave turned off. At the very bottom, you have the choice between square meters, square foot, or ping. Uh, I live in the US and we use square feet here, so I have mine set to square feet. If you have a dock attached, and I have the ultra dock attached, you will have the dock settings. Now with the ultra dock, we have a couple of extra features here over the auto empty dock. The ultra dock, which is the empty wash fill dock, will give you the option for how, you, how well you want it to clean the mopping pad. Now I choose deep so that it thoroughly cleans my mopping pad, but keep in mind that deep will also use more water and take more time while it is cleaning. If you don't want to use more water, you want to choose light or balanced, or maybe your environment isn't all that dirty. If you do daily cleaning, you can probably get by with just light or balanced to save some water. The mop washing frequency, you get a couple different options here. The first one is by room, which means that when it gets finished with a room, it will go back and wash the mop before going to the next room, or you can choose by time. So the minimum is 10 minutes and the maximum is 50 minutes. I leave it on 10 minutes. What that means is while it's out mopping, when it hits 10 minutes, it will go back to the dock to wash the mopping pad. And if you just have the auto empty dock, you will have the option here to turn on or off the auto empty dock. Obviously the empty wash fill dock does the auto emptying of the dustbin as well. And you have to choose between a few different modes, smart, light, balanced, or max. I recommend smart, which uh, it doesn't change the vacuum power of the dock. It basically changes how long the vacuum motor runs to empty out the internal dustbin of the S7 Max V. If you choose light, it'll run for about 10 seconds. Balanced will run, if I recall, for about 15 seconds. And Max does it for a little over 20 seconds. If you choose smart, if it goes out and cleans a small room, it'll run it for just a few seconds. And if you go out and clean your whole house or multiple rooms, it'll run it longer. I recommend leaving it on smart. The carpet settings. Uh, this is where you're going to want to turn carpet boost on. And I recommend this unless you just don't have carpet or rugs in your house. When the Roborock S7 Max V detects carpet using the ultrasonic carpet sensor underneath the robot, it will boost the vacuum power up to max. It will also dynamically lift the mopping plate on the back of the robot. In case you have a mopping pad attached back there, I recommend turning on dynamic lift so that it raises that mopping pad up and doesn't drag a wet mop across your carpets. Keep in mind, it can only really clear low pile carpet. Medium and high pile carpet are not well suited for the Roborock S7 Max V and I recommend removing the mop before uh, sending your S7 Max V to go out and vacuum carpets that have uh, a medium or high pile carpet. The robot voice is essentially where you go in here and change the different voice. Uh, mine came standard on English and I haven't changed that. Schedules is something that allows you to select different schedules. You can set up several different schedules to start a cleaning, how many times you want it to repeat, the different cleaning modes. You can select and customize your cleaning modes here. We'll get more into that in a few minutes. And whether you want to do a full house cleaning or you want to select rooms, you can set up, set up multiple schedules as well. The pin and go feature allows you to send the robot vacuum anywhere in your house. Just select a pin anywhere in the house and click go and your S7 Max V will go there. You can also send it to a, to a spot cleaning by choosing the spot cleaning function. I'll show you a better way to do that here in just a few minutes. The remote control feature allows you to choose either by button or joystick to remote control your S7 Max V around your house or quickly send it back to the dock. This is a feature I don't use and uh, find there isn't really much use for it since this is a smart navigation robot vacuum. The cleaning history allows you to select uh, different past cleanings in your house and take a look at the details of it. Here you can see where I cleaned half of the house and you can see the different icons where it detected different items in my house to avoid. Now you can't actually click on the items in the map. You can just see the details of the cleaning. Here I can see it cleaned 355 square feet. The cleaning time was 33 minutes and it washed the mop four times and tells you what time it did it. And so it gives you all the details of your past cleanings very handy.
Maintenance is where it's going to help you and remind you when you need to change some consumables like the filter uh, and the mopping pad. Now at the very top up here, we have the filter in the S7 Max V. It'll tell you how, many, how, how much time is remaining before you need to change that uh, filter. That is the one inside of the S7 Max V. The main brush roller, which is brush roller, which is the rubber brush roller, uh, will need to be changed after a certain period of time too. It does last quite a while though. The side brush, same way. Sensors on the bottom just need telling you to where to clean the different sensors on the bottom and on the side of your S7 Max V. They get dust built up on them over time, and it can mess with the navigation of the robot vacuum. As you can see here, it's getting pretty close for me to clean mine. The mop is just telling you to replace the mopping pad. That will vary depending on your environment. Replace it as needed. Now, the very bottom down here is for the uh, empty wash fill dock. The water filter, which is in the base of the dock. If you've seen my video on that, you will see I showed you how to clean that out. Also, the high-speed brush that scrubs the mopping pad, uh, you will need to, to clean that once a month. And also the dust bag. Now, this is not telling you when the dust bag is full. It is just a reminder that you better check it because uh, it could be full after this certain period of time. I'm not sure why the bottom option here is uh, even listed. It is just more of an advertisement to show you that Riverrock does have their own cleaning fluid. Product info is the next option. That'll give you some details about your Roborock S7 Max V. And you know, also right below that, you do have the user manual, which is a quick shortcut to the web. Firmware updates is where you'll go to check to see if you have any firmware updates. And also gives you details of the current uh, firmware update that has been applied. And device sharing, the option there, if you don't want to give somebody credentials to your Roborock app to log in, and you want to be able to give them access to do uh, cleanings in your house, maybe it's a maid, maybe it's somebody doing some babysitting for you. Uh, you can essentially share this out so they can have access to your robot vacuum without having to log in and without you having to give them the credentials. And at the very bottom, you have the option to delete the device from the app. And that is it for the menu settings, at least at the very top. We have several of those settings to go through here. So going right down, we have uh, right below it, we have this cube right here. We're going to click on that, and that will give you uh, the ability to toggle, uh, customize the map, and kind of toggle things on and off, and allow you to uh, turn on and off the room names, and we'll show you how to figure that out here in a few minutes, uh, the floor types, furniture, and obstacle. So all it is is just a mask to toggle certain things on and off. I recommend leaving everything on. The map rotation will do the orientation right now. You can spin the map around in uh, different directions to well, better suit your home and floor plan. Uh, at the very bottom, we have the map type, which is 2D and 3D. Uh, this is something new with the Roborock S7 Max V. Uh, the 2D is the one I use all the time. And you may be wondering, well, why don't you use 3D? Well, I'll tell you, when you choose 3D, it does look pretty cool does give you a three-dimensional look of your house. However, it only works and functions when you do a full house cleaning, something I don't do really at all. I do most of my cleanings by room or by zone, and when you click on room or zone, it switches back to the 2D map. So it's not something I think you will use that often. It's a neat feature, but not something I would recommend turning on. Now, right below that, we have this little square box. And what that does is it allows you to set up invisible walls or no-go zones and also a no-mop zone. So let's start with setting up an invisible wall. Let's say over here on the side of this room right here, I want a visible wall. And I want that so that the robot vacuum will not cross over this invisible wall. And so I can adjust the size and height of it. And the robot vacuum will not cross over that wall. Uh, once you set that up on, on the uh, map, you can select as many visible walls as you want. Uh, the other option, the one I like also, is the no-go zone. It is essentially a box that is resizable. And so if I choose this no-go zone and I put it over here in this corner, the robot vacuum will not cross over into that zone. That's helpful for areas uh, that might have a lot of cables or that are kind of cluttered that... Uh, the robot vacuum may typically get stuck in. You may want to set up a no-go zone for 
and so it won't vacuum or mop in that area. Okay, the last option is the no mop zone. Let's say I have an area where I have a medium or a high pile carpet, and I don't want the Robo Rocket 7 Max V to go over that area. I put a no mop zone here, and if the mopping pad is attached to my robot vacuum, it will not go in that area. Okay, right below that is a sideways menu button. That gives you a lot of options and one you probably will use frequently. Uh, so that is for the map, and the first thing is map details. We saw that a minute ago where it basically will bring up a shortcut to the box up there, which is toggling on and off all the map details. Uh, the next option is the no-go zone, another shortcut there to the no-go zone. So the next option is the edit room option. With the edit room option, when your S7 Max V goes out and does an initial mapping of your home, it will try to divide your rooms up for you. And I can tell you right now, it does not do a great or perfect job with that. You will need to merge and divide your rooms manually. So let's take this room right here. Let's say I wanted to divide it in half. I click the divide button. It brings up this line right here. I choose where I want to divide it. I click the check box here to divide it. And after a few seconds, it will divide it into two separate rooms. Now, once it's divided in two separate rooms, let's say that that is something that I did not want to do. I can merge those back. All I have to do is select the two rooms that I want to merge together and check, check the box here and it will merge those rooms back together. So this is where you will separate your rooms out. It does take a little bit of patience to do it and some trial and error. So just be patient with it. A very important feature though, so you can do room cleanings. And the last feature is the name feature. So if I click on name, I can select this room and choose from a list of can names. I can also manually name any room, any name I want. If things get too messed up, you can just click the resplit room option up here at the very top. And that option will essentially try to resplit the rooms for you. Okay, the next option is edit furniture. This is something new with the S7 Max V. It will go out and it will detect different furniture types in your house when it is doing the initial mapping. And with this, it was a bit hit and miss for me. However, don't fret, you can add your own furniture and I'll tell you why you wanna add furniture. With the S7 Max V, Rubber Rock gives you the option to select the furniture and do a quick zone cleaning around it. Uh, think about your dining room table here. After you get finished eating a meal, you can select the dining room table and the Rubber Rock S7 Max V will go out and clean around the table and go back to the dock. So this might be why you wanna put furniture on here other than it being aesthetically pleasing. You can add also your own furniture to the room. If I want to add a chair here, I can. I can resize it, move it around, twist it, uh, and do essentially whatever I want to place it on the map. And uh, Rover Rock is adding different uh, types of furniture to the app. So uh, nice little handy new feature with the uh, S7 Max V. Now the next type is the edit surface type. Now when the Again, when it goes out and does the initial mapping, it will try to detect what type of floor you have using the ultrasonic uh, sensor on the bottom. I found it did this very well. In fact, it was 100% accurate in my house, and I have all three types of floors. That is tile, uh, hardwood floor, and also carpet. Here you can see the differences in those. However, if it gets it wrong, you can override it. Uh, so I can select a uh, floor type and let's say this right here it detected it as tile but it should be wood i can simply just switch it to wood or back to tile i can also edit carpet or basically cancel out the carpet detection so if i click edit carpet and i want to go in here and select this carpet right here i can basically clear it out okay well here we have a few options for backing up the map Occasionally, you may want to manually back it up. I do find that Roborock does a uh, create a backup every once in a while when changes are made. Uh, but let's say I want to go in here and make some changes. And before I make the changes on the map, I want to do a quick backup. Just click backup and it will do a quick backup of your map. That way, if you need to go in and use a backup because you messed something up, it will tell you here the last backup time. If it's a manual backup, it'll tell you right here and you can choose to use it or not. Uh, the delete map option is there if you want to delete the entire map. Let's say it gets messed up and you can delete it and start all over. Uh, the last is the map name. You can name this uh, whatever you want. If you have a multi-story uh, house, you may want to name it 
uh, based on the floor. Okay, right below that we have a camera here and if you click on that, it will give you the option to remote control the robot vacuum. As you can see here, we are backing up from the dock. And you can remote control it around the house. Uh, this is handy for if you are away on vacation and you want to take a look at your pets or if you want to talk to family members, you can do that by using the call function and you can start a call with the two-way audio and the video camera on that you see here on the front with the two-way audio. The call basically allows you to talk through your phone to the people or pets in the house and allow you to hear them as well. Now the map function, basically you just select somewhere in on the map and you click go and the robot vacuum will go there. So some handy functionality allows you to remote control your uh, S7 Max V around your house. Now keep in mind when you turn this on in the app, the S7 Max V will announce that it is being remote controlled by voice. So the robot itself will tell you, hey, uh, this is now being controlled by remote control remotely. So you don't have to worry about somebody taking control of it and you not being aware of it. Once you're complete, it will automatically return to the dock. You can see here on the map where I was remote controlling it around. And you can also see a couple of different objects on the, on the map. Now these objects that you see on the map here, the shoes are basically the Roborock S7 Max V identifying shoes on the map. And I, because I have the photo turned on, you can see here that it identified my sandal sitting there and it avoided it. So this actually did not recognize that is not a, a shoe there. Uh, so you can say need to avoid it. You can ignore it. Uh, it tells you what the confidence is. So it's 84%. That is not a shoe. I can see where it would see it's a shoe. But if you want to avoid it, you, know, you can click uh, OK. But make sure that if you avoid it, that you don't expect there to be a shoe there in the future. Because if there is a shoe sitting there in the future, it will it will ignore that there's a shoe there. Okay, let's go down here to the different options for cleaning. We have full, room, and zone. Full is, as it says, if I click clean right now, it will go out and do an entire house cleaning. Um, the options that we have over here on the right-hand side will tell you what you want to do, whether you're wanting to vacuum and mop at the same time, and the different suction levels of power for the vacuum motor. Uh, I normally choose balanced. And also the scrub intensity for the mop. Now the scrub intensity, remember this is a vibrating mopping pad and it chooses the scrub intensity and also the water volume that goes down on the mopping pad. I leave mine at the highest level intense and it works out well even on my wood floors. Now if you don't want to vacuum, you only want to mop, you do get one extra option here. You can choose between standard and deep mopping. Now deep mopping is going to send the S7 Max V in a tighter zigzag path so it will cover the same area more times and I find it is extremely effective. So if you have a lot of stains or dirty floor, make sure you do a mop and you do deep mopping. This option is only available with mop. You can't use it with vacuum and mop. Now, if I just want to vacuum, once again, we get a secret option here. The S7 Max V has 5,100 pascals of suction, which is more than double the older model. And if I want to turn on that 5,100 pascals, I turn on max plus mode here and this one time when it goes out to vacuum it will boost the vacuum vacuum power up to that 5100 pascals of suction power this is only available once so if i choose this to go out and do a vacuum of a room or the whole house the next time i want to go out and do a vacuum i will have to manually go in here and toggle this on if I go back to vacuum and mop, you will see the option for max plus is not available. That's right. It is only available when you are vacuuming and only vacuuming. And once again, you have to toggle it on each time. The customized feature will allow you to set custom settings per room for vacuum and mop intensities. It will do this automatically for you. You see the smart option here uh, where it will determine based on your floor type that it detected earlier, whether it should, what power uh, the suction power and the scrub intensity should be on. I find this feature to not be so helpful because a lot of rooms, uh, when it detects it, for instance, this is carpet, I would want my suction power to be a little bit higher and scrub intensity um, obviously low, but I don't want to mop my carpet. So I generally, every time I send my robot vacuum out, I generally manually set uh, my vacuum and uh, mopping mode. 
When I choose a room cleaning, and this is how I clean my house most of the time, I can choose up to three times to clean a room. I can select more than one room to clean. I cannot select the order that they clean them in, but I can select as many rooms as I want, and I can choose up to three times per room for it to clean it. And the next option is zone cleaning. I can choose multiple zones, and uh, it essentially gives you a little box here that you can resize. Let's say I have a mess here in front of my couch, and I want to just go get it to vac get the robot to vacuum it up real quick. I can also choose up to three times for it to clean that zone. And as I mentioned before, I can select multiple zones for it to go clean. There is one other neat feature that was added with the S7 Max V, and that is with the furniture. I showed you the furniture on the uh, app a few few minutes ago and if I select the furniture it will automatically draw a zone box around it so that may be handy for after breakfast here at the table uh, after people have spilled crumbs and stuff on the floor you can select the table and it will go out and clean around this furniture it's a pretty neat feature and the reason why you have furniture on the app now the very last thing is down here at the very bottom we have the clean button Obviously that will send the robot vacuum and start your cleaning, but you also have the dock button. So if I click that, right now my S7 Max V is sitting here on the dock and it's charging up. As you see here, I have the ability to empty the internal dust bin. So if I push that, the motor inside the dock will come alive and empty the contents of the S7 Max V. If I wanna do that manually, I can do it here. I can also select wash. If I select that, the S7 Max V will back up on the dock and go ahead and do a washing. That is handy for sometimes when it has gone out and done a cleaning and I want to wash it, uh, the mopping pad a little bit more than it did, I can select that a few times and get it to go ahead and wash the mopping pad. Now if the S7 Max V is out cleaning and you wanna stop the cleaning, if you hit the dock button, you will have a few different options to go back to the dock and charge, go back to the dock and empty the uh, internal dustbin or go back to the dock and wash the mopping pad. All right, so that is a overview for the S7 Max V app. If you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below. I'll be happy to answer anything that you have. I hope this video was informative for you. I appreciate you watching this. Take it easy, everyone. Bye-bye.